When the shooting stopped, when the thump of grenades retreated with the vanquished, the U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Ryan Pitts was lying there, bleeding out of so many places his buddies worried he wouldn't make it. So born in Lowell, Massachusetts, but grew up in southern New Hampshire. Pretty normal childhood, did normal kid stuff. I enlisted halfway through my senior year and then shipped off for basic training in Fort Sill, Oklahoma that summer. Then on to airborne school and I was assigned to the 173rd Airborne Brigade in Vicenza, Italy. So when I first got to the 173rd, the unit was still deployed to Iraq. They had jumped in to northern Iraq, done a combat parachute assault. And I just remember being really nervous. Like all these guys have been in war for a year and I'm the new guy. I know, I've seen enough movies to know that, that being a new guy is never a good thing. It was July 2008 in a remote village in Afghanistan called Wanat, and Pitts had somehow managed to hold off the first wave of some 200 Taliban fighters who tried to overrun the base where he manned the observation post. You know, to me, this was a team effort. I looked around and guys like Jason Bogar standing up and firing back and Jonathan Ayers manning a machine gun to the death and I was just trying to keep up with everybody else around me. I was just trying to do my part, just like everyone else, and we did it as a team. I don't think anybody gave more than anyone else. We just did what we needed to do in our each, our respective positions. As the forward observer, Pitts was knocked to the ground by a barrage of rocket-propelled grenades. Shrapnel ripped through his arms and legs, and Pitts believed he was going to die. Now, I remember on that battlefield that day, I mean, I'd lost a significant amount of blood. I was kind of relieved to be leaving because I wasn't really in any shape to contribute. But I kind of wanted to just get treated and then we wanted to go back. And I think I actually, my parents said, I told them over the phone that like, don't worry, they're gonna patch me up and I'm going back out. And <laughs> I got to Walter Reed and asked the doctors, they're like, is he gonna go back? And they're like, no, he's not going back anytime soon. So. This comes back to that dedication that we have to each other. I mean, I think while we were there, if the unit was in a fight, you know, we wanted to be there with them, and it wasn't because we wanted to be in a fight and there was some glory to be had. It was about, you know, if my brother's in it, I want to be there right there with him. With great care at the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center and the Veterans Administration Hospital in Manchester, New Hampshire, his most obvious wounds healed. But back home in southern New Hampshire, his wife Amy noticed the wound no one could see. But yeah, there are some times this is where I'd realize that you know, either his mind was somewhere else or I'd think you know, maybe he's just busy or he's not remembering, but the more frequently of realizing that you know, maybe your memory isn't as great and maybe it's something that we, you know, we need to acknowledge that it's not just you know, being a normal guy and having selective hearing, I think that you're, the short-term memory is an issue. I think after time she saw that, you know, I was impacted by what we, I don't think any of us come back the same person. We are all changed by what we go through. I mean, it was something that wasn't, I work through and, you know, here's a month later, I'm, I've processed it. It's kind of ongoing. I think it's still ongoing today. You know, people ask me, how has your transition been? I was like, well, I'm still transitioning. I think I'll spend a lifetime transitioning and processing what's happened. At Amy's urging, Ryan Pitts went back to the VA and was diagnosed with traumatic brain injury. He got treatment and he got better. The physical wounds have taken their toll um, and we're still learning about the invisible ones. And I think those are probably the greater threat to my generation coming back because they're so misunderstood. I mean, I've had friends that don't want to go get treatment. They don't want to be seen as crazy or they feel like it's weak. On Monday, the night before Veterans Day, Ryan Pitts stood on the stage at Symphony Hall and told of his own invisible wounds for the first time. He did so at an event to support home base. Ladies and gentlemen, Medal of Honor recipient, Staff Sergeant Ryan Pitts. 
Good evening, everyone, and thank you for attending this special evening to show your support for the home base program. I really like their approach. You know, it being holistic, it's about the family too. You know, anybody can get treatment. I like that if you had health insurance, great. If you didn't, you'd never receive a bill. It's about taking care of people. Pitt suffered in his own way. Eight of the nine soldiers who were killed in action that horrible day in Wanat died at his position, and he blamed himself. But then I, I don't even know when it happened or what caused it. I just tried to think from, you know, what would they want? You know, what if it had been me in their shoes and they were in mine? And, you know, we owe it to everybody that, that didn't make it to live lives worthy of their sacrifice. It is tough sometimes when you have a friend that's, that's struggling and you, know, you maybe try to align some resources for them to go get help. And then they're like, nah, I'm okay. It's gonna be on your own terms. You gotta be ready for it. It's a delicate balance of you know, pushing them and telling them it's okay and you know, hoping that they'll go get some help, um, but not doing anything to pull them down. You know, I don't want to be telling them that they're broken. I shouldn't be. Who am I to tell? Six years after he saved countless lives in battle, Ryan Pitts is still saving lives. His words are as powerful as the grenades that kept death at bay in a godforsaken place called Wanat. 